Mire usted, usted le estoy pidiendo ayuda para solucionar su problema. Mi problema, ese Yo, es su problema. ¿Qué? Oye, da, oye si, si, si me echa un metro o dos metros, no va a cambiar nada. No, no es fácil. ¿Tú quieres que yo eche dos metros atrás? Yo quiero que tú te salgas de aquí. ¿Qué está diciendo? He's Is saying he? he got here at 8 o'clock at night. We were here at 8 o'clock. We're still having dinner here at 8 o'clock at night. If you've been keeping up with the latest episodes, you know that we are enjoying ourselves in the Balearics and exploring the best of Mallorca and Ibiza. It's been a great summer so far, with visiting incredible anchorages and meeting great people along the way. We've even learned a skill or two to boot. That's stairway to heaven? There's a lady who shows... I'm not learning how to sing. But if there is one thing that we were warned about from the beginning, it is that in August, not only do the temperatures rise, but so do the number of boats. It's been said that if you can survive a season on anchor in the crowded Balearic anchorages, then the rest of the world will seem like a walk in the park. Join us as we head to the popular anchorage of Solaire in Mallorca. We're going to need every skill in the book to find the right spot to drop hook, but to also deal with others who don't play by the rules. Thank you so much to our patrons whose support make these episodes possible. Now, if there is one thing to know about anchorages, particularly busy ones, is that they are almost like hotel rooms, minus the room service. Most people leave the anchorage for the next destination before 11 a.m., let's call that checkout time, but there is no maid service for the spot left behind, so the empty spot is just there for the take. And in general, you can usually find a spot for the night if you arrive by 4 p.m. That's right, check-in time. Does it get easier anchoring every time, Will? Are you sweating? No, I'm good. I'm good. I think what you realize is anchoring in a place like this is that you get you get comfortable with coziness along your neighbors. That's for sure. I, 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 I hear that in the Caribbean. Oh. Watch out! Someone's right up your tail. Oh. I hear that in the Caribbean. There's space to be found for everyone. Here, uh, Not you gotta so. know how much chain you have out and how much everyone else has out because we're at all times, problems. right? At all times. And ready? No, we can't no see the bottom; it's too dirty. All right, Avalon, ready, set, and drop. Go, 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 go. Without a doubt, you do not get a lot of wiggle room. So the key is to ensure that you have your anchor set in a hurry so you are good for the night. Pull us backwards. So right now we are straightening ourselves out and then we're going to pull back on the anchor to check to be sure that it's strong and we're not going to drag and hit anybody else. Which and how, bad. how do you figure out if we're dragging or not? Um, so when dad starts to pull us back, we're going to find a spot out that way. And then if we move and our finger moves, because we're going to look at it like that, then we'll know that we're dragging. And also normally we feel it dragging along the rocks. Yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah, I felt that hold. Did it hold? Yeah. We're good. Woohoo! Success! We anchored. It's always it's always a happy moment when we anchor. One or two tries. What are you doing right now? I'm just jumping in, checking the setting of the anchor. All right, so what, what do you do when you check that? Uh, I just look down, see if it's caught on something, and if it is, then job well done. All right, sounds good. Going in. You don't go in in five, four. <laughs> oh, he jumped really close. Cool. Okay, all right. Margo, is it cold? Okay, I'll see you And with a properly set anchor, we were able to sit back and enjoy the evening because what was going to come that night was not going to be pretty. So a very long day has turned into a Even successful longer day. day. No, it's turned into awesome. Yeah. We're now at one of the crowdiest, cr crowd, crowdiest? Crowdest, crowded, 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 the most crowded anchorages we that we've ever crowded. been um, since we've been here, and just in time because there's like 35 knot winds coming tonight. Remember what we said about tight anchorages? Well, this was about to get really ugly. The Galapagos Islands, a place which teaches us how nature can exist in its purest and most unspoiled element with minimal human intervention. In February of 2022, World Towning Voyages will venture off to Ecuador. We will begin this magical journey with an exploration of the uniquely Incan and Spanish culture of Quito. 
After several days on land, we will take the 600 mile flight into the Pacific to join our private motor yacht for an unforgettable seven night journey of discovery through the best of the Galapagos Islands. Our family lived and explored this spectacular country for nine months, and without a doubt, we consider it to be one of the most culturally and ecologically diverse locations on the planet. Our small and intimate trip to this incredible country is sure to be life-changing. Space is limited, so act fast. We cannot wait to share with you the awe of Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands. That night, around 1.30 in the morning, the wind started to kick up to about 30 knots, which woke up the entire anchorage. When we got up on deck, we were shocked to see that a boat had moored up right next to us and was now less than two meters from our stern. We immediately turned on the engines and moved the boat as much as we could in the crowded anchorage as the wind eventually went to a dead calm. We offered to help our neighbor get untied from the ball, but it was at this point that the insanity began. Pero un momento, ¿tú tienes 25 metros de cadena? Sí. Aquí hay 6 metros. No, tampoco, hay 7, hay, hay 7 y pico de metros. Si, si, si me echa... Un metro o dos metros, no va a cambiar nada. ¿Tú quieres que yo eche dos metros atrás? Yo quiero que tú te salgas de aquí. What is he saying, Juan? He's What saying he, he got here at 8 o'clock at night. We were here at 8 o'clock. We were still having dinner here at 8 o'clock at night. We watched everything. We yeah. were having, no, we were here at 9 p.m. We were, like? We were literally out here having dinner at 9 p.m. Oh my gosh, it was dark. Night. The place gets... He's sitting here lying to you about that? He yeah. was saying, oh, this is his friend's mooring ball or something like that. You don't own mooring And then his friend helped him moor onto it. He's by himself. ¿Qué vas a hacer? Voy a más largo y me voy a hacer un gallo más largo. Y me iré ahí en medio. ¿Qué se Ah, pero es soga, no es cadena. Pues entonces tú vas a mover más que nosotros. Sí, pero no, pero yo me voy a mover. ¿Por qué? No, que, que tú tienes una ancla. No, what? What's he asking? He wants to go ahead and basically change the rope to go ahead and do that. But he wants me to help him change the rope so it's that. A, listen, I get he's by himself. I get that he's he's not having you know an easy go at it. Then he shouldn't be But, but I don't himself. trust he's gonna have a rope and we have chain, so therefore he's gonna swing more than us. I, I just, I just, for I the safety of the boat, I don't get it. And your family on here. Right. Es es que, mira, ¿cuál es su amigo? Porque, por, porque ahora tú me estás diciendo que es, es su, su amiga, ahora su amigo está en ningún lugar. Yo lo voy a dormir esta noche ahora, gracias a Dios. Pero, pero ese, ese no, ese no es culpa mío. Le estoy diciendo que no tengo otra alternativa. Si sí, puede ir ahí afuera. Even though he knew he was in the wrong, the other guy just dug in his heels. <laughs> Although he had an anchor, he didn't want to move and only wanted to put out more rope on the mooring ball. <laughs> Puntando el otro lado. Si tú pones 10 metros, entonces nosotros, si yo voy a un, a un lado, tú vas al otro lado, y entonces chocamos otra vez. Es que no. Voy a seguir llamando. Bueno, que. que... I've seen it in other anchorages. Oh, shit. What? So, what he's, so what he's asking is he wants to go ahead and. Because the, the, the mooring ball, which is not his. He's saying that he wants to go ahead and use it. He says it's his friends. There's no boring balls allowed in this anchorage anyway. Nothing legal, at least. Oh, well, and so he already lied too and said he was here at the clock. I wouldn't trust he the wants, dude. And he wants me to get in the dinghy and then help him change his rope to a longer rope. But we're getting to the point where the boats are moving. Look at this. Right now, they are pointing directly at our beam. It's like, I mean, this anchorage is is just. It's bizarre. You get all of the all the boats moving in different directions. If we actually go back to back, we'll hit again, particularly because he's got a longer rope out there. So the, the correct answer is it's not his mooring. There's no real legal moorings here. He's got to move, and it just it makes no sense to me. I, I really do sympathize the fact that he's by himself. But right outside, we have we have a buddy boat who's right over there at the entrance to the harbor, and he can and they're fine. 
There's nothing going on there. Why doesn't he want to move out there? He's got an anchor that works just fine. Why doesn't he want to move out there? Because probably he's being stubborn. I have no idea. But it's, it's been like an hour now. You've got a family here. It loses. Yep, I know. I know. It's not, it's not ideal. I'm just glad I slept in my shorts on. <laughs> We're almost at nose to nose. There's our nose, there's his nose. And there is, there's no sort of, there's nothing here, there's nothing here that makes sense about this. Well, if his buddy's here, now he can move. His buddy's here. No, I, I know that, Jess. They're disconnecting. It's, I mean, they're coming in, the, the wind's coming in for offshore, so there's, they're not really too concerned about the winds tonight. Um, maybe the wind's on Tuesday, which is like two days from now, where it's going to be coming in from, from, from the ocean. But at this point, all right, he's moving. And there we go. And that's how you solve things at two in the morning. Watch, we're gonna wake up to slash dinghy. We're gonna wake up to the <laughs> this is slash dinghy. Our, our our boat tagged with spray paint all down the side. Bye bye. His buddy was on, his buddy was on shore, so he's probably like at some of the bars at this he point. Probably was. You know, I know we're new sailors, but I I have this very strong feeling that if you cannot single-handedly sail then you should not be doing that and his reasoning was he couldn't move it on his own which I actually think he did not have the skill set to do any I think his buddy hooked him up to the ball and left him and he didn't know what he was doing well this was fun this is kind of romantic evening well want to make out <laughs> now everyone see my jammies mm -hmm. I'm looking out from my window Sun's coming up like the day before You're like a stone on my pillow I don't make a sound when I shut the door oh, You don't have to wake up yet oh, We can spend our day in bed Hey mm. Alright I slept like a baby after 4 a.m. How'd it go? It finally slowed down around 3.30 in the morning for people to stop moving. I think the last boat came in, or tried to come in, around like 3.15. And he finally gave up and sort of went outside the mouth of the harbor. But yeah, it's close. It's oh. really close. Even that boat right there, um, I think he has more chain out than us because when when he was when we swung in one direction, he was like 30 feet away. When we were swung and sort of on the opposite side, we were like 50 feet away. So either he's got too much, or we have too little, or we have who knows what. I don't, I'm too tired to even think about it right now. It's nap time. Last night they were all up. Every single one of the neighbors was standing up watching the festivities on they unravel. The crazy part is they thought there were going to be like 35 knot winds and there was like the one gust that got really, really strong that woke me up and got me out of bed, which is what sort of alerted me to this guy coming in. It's not like he brought the winds, but he just happened to sort of show up at the same time. And at time. that point he was seconds away from hitting us. So if you had not woken up with the gust, oh my God, you, you're like a real sailor. You feel <laughs> things coming, Will. I have, I have a sixth sense. <laughs> <laughs> You're the wind whisperer. I know. Um, I'm. There was no big winds last night, but it just it was like this crazy sort of circular winds, which all the boats were just going in different directions. Which it would have been a hard night last night. We would have been constantly on the motor if it wasn't for for him moving. And so finally, after like two hours of arguing with you, his buddy it's, showed up. It's kind of ominous today too. It's a little creepy. Everyone's rocking. Maybe I shouldn't call you or leave a message at all. So I try to be patient, cause nothing's written on the wall. Yet yeah, too soon to mention how I've begun to feel that I want your attention. This time it is for real Oh baby, love me like you did last night I wanna hold you till the morning comes Oh baby, love me like you did last night So we're, we're, we're taking off from this spot right now. We're gonna stay in this 
anchorage because it looks really cute. Um, it's actually probably the most picturesque anchorage that we've seen so far as far as like with a town and everything else. And not super touristy. Not, well. Well, there's a lot of boats. <laughs> there's a ton of boats. And uh, we're just gonna move backwards over there so we can stay away from that mooring ball of, of, of non-sleep. I'm not excited to go ahead and have another night like that with this guy. So. Everyone seems to think that everyone's been telling us it's theirs. So I guess 80 people own this thing at this point. Yeah. It's yeah. just an excuse to grab it. It's community and, property. Yeah. <laughs> we want to sleep tonight, so. Yep. So we're just going to go about, about 100 yards that way. Argo, we can't count on you if there's an emergency because you slept through everything last night. No, I didn't. <laughs> well, woke me up. I yelled at him we hit a boat and he didn't wake up. Oh my God, and we didn't hit a boat. Up. Were you making it dramatic to have him get out of bed? Oh, <laughs> why else would, would grown men be screaming at each other in Spanish except that we hit a boat, right? No, they came within inches of hitting us. Really? Yeah, he was probably about six inches from hitting us. Everyone's looking at us like we're the bad kids on the block because we kept everyone awake last night. We just stand our ground. Are you stand kidding me? our ground, exactly. Or, or risk an insurance claim that. Uh, that guy might not even have insurance. <laughs> now, even though we were exhausted from the night's festivities, we owed it to ourselves to get out and see what the town of Soler had to offer. And being parents of teenagers and us being big kids at heart, we know that to get ourselves in a better place, it just takes a little bit of indulgence. Well, gelato looks good. What? Nada, huh? orange. There's a lot of citrus here, apparently. And they harvest it in March. I don't hear the ice cream. I can see though. a gelato place right... Well, it's not ice cream, it's gelato. There you go. And I can see one literally right behind you. Did you really? Yeah. We can start the day that way. Are you serious? I didn't think... I wasn't going to ask, because I never, I never thought you'd say yes about that. What? Reverse we, lunch? We yes, can. let's go. Come on. Let's go. Get Only if it's inside that guide. Book. I have dairy issues. Oh, look. They have the... Naranja de Solea. Yeah. That's popular. It's vegan. <laughs> oh my god, it is vegan. Yeah. Yeah. Gracias. Oh. Good. It's like cream sickle. It's like a cream sickle. Are you serious? Yeah. So if there's one thing that we've come to realize is that a bad night of defending the boat is always remedied with a good morning of ice cream. And we're now here at the Port of Salar, and this is a, it's, it's a really cute port town. It's actually the most picturesque port town that we've seen so far. And it's, it's still a little touristy, but not like the other places we've been, which is, it's pretty nice. It's pretty nice to feel like locals. But our plan is beyond meandering here, this is like a real town of Salar, which is like only four kilometers away, and they have this wonderful little train. We're gonna go check out the train. We're gonna go to Solar the train and overpay our, our way to get there. <laughs> The town of Soler in the northwest of Mallorca became wealthy because of the valley's abundant citrus groves. The mountains separate this peaceful village from the rest of the island, and what has been built here is truly spectacular. Beautiful architecture and incredible restaurants. But to get to the main village from the port, there is an interesting mode of transportation available. Right. And with that, we are exiting the train. There is like a massive amount of people here. They are going onto the train. I, listen, so totally worth it. It's an overpriced train. It's a touristy thing, but if you're okay sort of investing in quality experiences, this is actually a really cool experience. And I think the, the scenery along the way was really, really beautiful and gave you a great kind of feel of what you were coming into in this town, which is amazing. Okay, Evelyn, let's go. All right, let's go check, check this place out. That, that little tight for you, Lago? Yeah. Way too tight. You know, your voice is changing like overnight. Huh? So, yeah. Yeah. Your voice just got deeper like to, at this moment. Cool. Created a workbench. Cool. Now that the kids are thoroughly on a sugar high, we took to the streets to explore this super cute town. One of the drawbacks of being on a boat full time is that there's little opportunity to use the skateboards. But this afternoon, the kids let loose. 
just in time for a second sugar-filled stop for the Mallorcan specialty called Ansamada. We, you, we prepare it for, you know, normally it's to take away, to fly. Yeah. Everybody buy to fly, but we prepare it to eat here. Okay. We're okay. not flying anywhere, this so. This is the Ensaimada, you know? Oh, that's good. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Don't eat it all. I got chocolate. Oh my gosh, look at this place. Wow. I feel like the queen of friendship right now. This is so I feel like in my I feel like I'm in my, my grandmother's house right now. Look at this. <laughs> oh my gosh, I feel like this just made the day. This is really I'm so happy to be back in culture. Oh, oh wow. Is that piece for you? <laughs> Listen, it's too much to carry. I know I'm gonna have a second piece. It feels like a like a croissant, but lighter than a croissant. Completely filled up with a clair, um, a clair cream. Yeah, look at Margo, um, he's like shoving it. Margo, do you like it? Do you want me to talk for you? I love it. I love anything that's laced with chocolate and sugar and can give me a mustache. <laughs> There is one thing for certain, and that is that the Balearics is like a madhouse of people in the month of August because the entire European continent feels like it's on vacation. And they're all coming here this year, particularly because of COVID and sort of locked borders. And, you know, Europe seems to be like a, its own like little bubble at this point. So there's tons of people. You'll never feel like there's any type of lockdown or any type of travel restrictions going on at all. So. I, I, I feel like there's so much activity going on here. Now, if only the people around here can learn how to anchor, okay, and not get in your way, Someone's I think... still a bit bitter. I'm still a little bit bitter about that. The wound that. is still there, isn't it? It's still fresh. It stings. It, it really does. I'm still, maybe I'm just a little tired. I haven't got a lot of sleep. And we're pointing southwest. He's pointing northeast or something like that. Hard to get these I'm pointing up. And I'm pointing towards, I need a cup of coffee. That's what I'm pointing towards. At no point did he actually get, at no point did he actually get ugly. Oh, he didn't? Well, I, no. was, I was swearing at him then. Yeah, well, I we were protecting our boat. That little orange mooring ball, which belongs to a catamaran, not to a catamaran, to a charter boat, which is not here, he's gone for like 15 days. The guy last night thought, thought he could claim that that was his friend. And well, we know the truth. well, when we said, that's not your friend, he's like, ooh, you know him? It's like, no, we don't know him. They have a lot of good options here. Cognac. This is what behind the scenes looks like with our fashion model. Dad, you're in my way of serious move. We're in the port right now, which is super cute. But we're gonna go actually into the town of Sula, which we heard is really amazing. Great architecture, a lot of fun. Maybe pick up some presents for some of our patrons. You're doing on the spot repairs for the skateboard liner. Cool. <laughs> well, that'd be a great thing. You could offer those kind of skills off the boat, right? Uh, where were you when the impeller went? Yeah. I know where I was. But I honestly feel like being here it feels like you're like one of like a million tourists, but it's worth it because it's really it's so it's worth beautiful. it. Beautiful. This is a beautiful. These islands are amazing. Island. This particular island is, I think, my favorite. I'm sorry, Ibiza, Formentera. Mallorca stole my heart.